Hello, everybody. My name is Gil Lanwer, and this is Bad Vibe. Uh, welcome to um, all of you watching on a Friday evening, and also welcome to everybody who is watching these shows in our archive on the uh, Bev Live platform. Um, today, we will continue our series of uh, talking about different uh, wines, different uh, styles, but mainly different varietals. Um, we talked about Riesling two weeks ago. We talked about Cabernet Sauvignon last week. And this week, we'll talk about one of my favorites. We talk about Pinot Noir. Um, so when people think about Pinot Noir, they often think about France. They think about Burgundy or Bourgogne, as the French say. That's kind of where, I mean, that's kind of where, where it all started and where still some of the best Pinot Noirs made in the world. Um, I'm a big fan and many of you are probably too. Um, then there's the U.S. We have the Willamette Valley in Oregon. We got some amazing Pinot Noir made in California. So there's some amazing wines being made in this country. And then a little fun fact, you um, can guess who, or can you guess, who the third largest producer of Pinot Noir is in the world? It's not New Zealand. It's not Australia. It's Germany. So Germany actually makes um, not that much less than, than, than the U.S., I think most of the um, German Pinot Noir is actually, actually uh, being consumed um, in Germany. It doesn't make it here to the U.S. Uh, and um, the quality just seems to be going up and up in, the, in that area. Um, I think uh, it, it probably has partially something to do with global warming. The, the fruit is just getting riper. And that's why you know we, uh, we also see good Pinot Noir. It's used for sparkling wine in um, the south of England. You know, make some really, really nice sparkling wine. And for those who don't know what varietals usually go into sparkling wine or um, champagne, for that matter, it's, uh, it's um, Chardonnay and it's also Pinot Noir. Um, so we actually are starting to see some um, really, really nice sparkling wine being made in the south of England. And, well, it could have to do with global warming too. Grapes are getting ripe and um, the climate is just really, really good to, uh, to, to, to grow these um, varietals there. So that's, um, those are the areas where, um, well, where they're mainly made. There's just plenty of other countries that um, make amazing um, Pinot Noir uh, and um, the US, France and Germany are just the biggest. Um, it's the 10th ten, most uh, planted varietal in the world, but it's also really, really hard to grow. Um, the clusters, like the little berries, are really, really small. You can e easily get like disease into it because the clusters are so small. And it's just not easy grape variety to grow. But if you do it right, it's magical. I mean, you, you make they can make um, these winemakers can make amazing wines with with Pinot Noir. But it doesn't allow for mistakes. Um, the wines are lighter in style, so they are on the light to medium body kind of side. So there's really no way to to hide the flaw. In, in big fruit or anything else, um, so it's easy uh, to spot mistakes. Um, it's a, it's not it's not easy to make, but like I said, if it's done well, it can be very very impressive. Um, so talking about the, the body, so when you look at Pinot Noir, it um, it's kind of like a a very light red, and what you want to look for is like as as, as you look as you have the the um, as you have the wine in the glass, you can kind of like look through it. That's not a bad thing. Don't think it's like, oh my God, what did they give me here? This is this looks more like grape juice. Um, that's normal for Pinot Noir. It's just um, lighter in style and the color is also lighter. That, that color is no indication though of flavor, uh, especially also bouquet or the nose. And, and they usually have a, a fair amount of um, bouquet as the French say, I mean, they, uh, the aromas coming out of the glass are just absolutely amazing and there's plenty of taste. One thing to say too is tannins are not very high. So what some people do, some winemakers do is what's called whole cluster fermentation, which means they take whole cluster, including the stem and everything, into the fermenter. And from those um, stems, you then get some tannins. So the wine that you are going to have um, through that method are going to be a little bit higher in tannins rather than if you don't. And um, yeah, I mean, they're lighter in tannins, they're easygoing, 
and um, the asset levels are fairly high. We talked about asset where we talked about Riesling. Asset levels are fairly high. What, what does that mean? The, they're very, very food friendly. So you have a wine that's lighter in style with high asset levels, um, not a big fruit bomb. You um, are not going to overpower the food. So it goes with all kinds of food, just like um, when I talked about um, Riesling uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, you have those high acid levels. You can also then age the wine very, very well because you have those high acid levels. Uh, one thing to mention too is um, when you think Pinot Noir, you have to think Chardonnay as well. Um, Burgundy is the perfect example because Burgundy makes amazing Chardonnay and amazing Pinot Noir. So the, the climate that you are looking for when, when making Pinot Noir is very, very similar to the climate that you're looking for when, um, when, you're, making, when you're making Chardonnay. Um, one thing to mention too is here in the U.S., especially, but I think all, so, somewhat all over the world, uh, saw an increase in wine sales through a movie. And um, in 2000, I think it was 2004, when the movie Sideways came out, and it was a movie about a character who did not care for Merlot, but I really, really loved loved Pinot Noir, and. That movie had actually quite an impact on sales. Like just in the U.S. alone, sales went up 16% after this movie. So um, that goes to show how much impact uh, a movie about wine can have on wine sales. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much um, all I wanted to share about uh, Pinot Noir. It's one of my favorites. Um, try it sometime. And, um, yeah, thanks for listening. And we'll see you soon. Bye.